Hey guys, Coach Dan Hammer Tennis, and in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to handle high forehands. So there's nothing more annoying than playing a match and that ball kicking up, getting out of your strike zone. It's got a lot of spin. It's getting high. It's a very difficult shot. So I'm going to be showing you guys some ways to handle that ball so that way you're hitting it back. It's not going to throw you out of your game. Maybe even take it from a defensive position to even an offensive position. So I'm going to have my slinger shooting some balls out. It's got enough spin on there. It's going to get kicking up out of my strike zone. I'm going to show you how to handle that ball with ease. But do me a favor first, guys. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that bell notification. Give this video a like and hit those comments below. I love to talk tennis with you guys. So all right, let's get to it. All right, guys, so you can see I got the ball machine set up here. The slinger's shooting them out pretty nice and high for me. So that ball's hitting, and that's kicking up. So that ball is about over my head right now. So that's a pretty annoying ball. It's got a lot of top spin. That's going to be a very difficult ball to handle. All right, so how are we going to handle these high balls? So my favorite way and the way that I typically recommend is to turn the tables on them. So they've played a shot that they think is going to be an offensive shot. And most players let that ball back them up, get them in, into the fence, into the curtain, or out of their strike zone. And so what happens is, is you produce a weaker shot. You can try to step up and take the ball on the rise, and we're going to cover that or you can scoot back and let the ball come back down back into your strike zone. However, the way that I like to handle a high ball is instead of trying to hit my normal stroke, I take my regular forehand structure, my leverage system, everything that I do with my hammer at forehand, and I turn so now I'm tilted upward. So what that's going to allow me to do is instead of my strike zone being here, my strike zone is now here. So I'm going to treat everything basically the same. So instead of pushing out to the right, I'm going to be pushing up. This is going to set my shoulders at a line this way. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to be rotating upward where I can hit the ball, extend, and then I'm going to be finishing down. So that's going to let me still drive my shot, be aggressive with it, but yet handle these higher balls that would be out of a normal strike zone, but now they're still right there in the exact same strike zone. I've just changed the angle that I'm swinging my racket. What that's going to do is it's going to produce a ball that's going to have top spin in relationship to how we normally hit it, but because of the angle now that we're swinging, that ball is going to curve off to the right for a right-hander. And so it's almost going to look like if you were a golfer, kind of like you're fading the ball. So the ball is going to go up, down, and off to the right. And so how that can take a defensive position and turn it to an offensive position for you now is that they're expecting a weak ball, but I'm going to be able to drive this ball, and it's going to now be moving off the court to their backhand side. So they're going to be getting a ball that's going to open up the court for me. Now, if I'm over on the backhand side, now I'm in excellent position to handle their return, drive it cross court, put away the easy ball. All right, so I'm gonna set my hands up higher than I normally would, and across the ball as I'm extending out to my target, set it down. <laughs>
So you can see when I'm hitting that shot, get my hand set, I'm hitting across the ball, the ball has almost a diagonal spin. Because instead of the top spin that I would apply if my contact point was level, now it's up in the air. And so because of that change of the angle, that spin, instead of going end over end this way, is now going this way. More of a diagonal spin, which is causing the ball to curve to the right and kick out that way. So instead of having a defensive shot coming out from that position, I'm able to drive that ball back into an offensive shot, hopefully put them now on the run. You can clearly see that I'm hitting the ball at around my head height or even higher, but I'm still driving that ball. So again, I'm taking a shot that should put me in a weak position, I'm driving it back and I'm taking them off the court. Another way that you can handle a high ball, which is probably my second go-to, because it's going to take a bigger change in my stroke. So if I drive the ball and I just tilt my shoulders now, I'm not really changing that much to my shot. I don't have to really change my upper body structure too much. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the ball on the rise. And some people will just hit a normal shot and try to time that up, but that's a lot harder. As soon as we recognize that that ball is going to be high, we're going to try to move into the court and we're going to take the ball on the rise. Now, because the ball is going to be rising up through your strike zone, it's going to want to climb. So the best thing to do is to get the racket down low, shorten your backswing, and attack the ball out in front. And so again, by using our hammer system on our leverage, maintain your upper body structure to set the racket down, kind of cover the ball and extend out. And so that's going to help you take the ball on the rise. So if the ball comes up and I'm hitting it on the rise, one of the difficulties with this shot is because the ball is now hopping, going so vertical through my contact point. So the ball is coming up very vertical through that contact point. It makes it a lot harder to time. Whereas if I scoot back and even play the ball higher over my head, the ball is still coming back and it's flattened out a little bit. If I'm taking a super high ball off the bounce, it's going to hit and go. It's going to be going very vertical through that contact spot. It makes my timing a lot harder. And so that's why I kind of have to slow down a little bit and I'm not able to put as much pace on that ball and that's going to be a little bit more of a defensive shot. So now let's go ahead and look at the other way to handle a high ball and that's just simply to back up, let the ball peak, come down out of that high ball category, get back down to your normal strike zone. Now again, the problem with this is they've just played a ball that's going to put you back into a defensive position. So if you let that ball go up, peak, and come back down, now you're being pushed way back onto the court. You could potentially collide with the back fence or an indoor curtain. Now, even if you do hit that ball well, you've got a lot more distance that you're gonna to have to drive that ball. So you're gonna to have to drive that ball a lot harder. You're gonna to have to hit it a lot higher because you need a lot more distance to get that ball back deep. So that way you're not already out of, out of the point. So if you're back deep against the fence or back deep against the curtain and you hit the ball short, they're gonna have an easy put away off the court or maybe even come in and close in and hit a volley. So we're going to have to elevate this ball and we're going to have to give it some air to give us a chance to get back into the point. So let's take a look and see how we hit that.
right, so you can see that if I were to play that ball up here where I was hitting the ball before, it was about my, I was making contact about my head or even above my head. And so I've scooted so much further back now, you can see how much further back I'm hitting the shot. I'm hitting it now back down below my shoulder height. So it's a lot more comfortable shot for me to hit because it's below my shoulder height. I want to try to drive most of my forehands below shoulder height. That's going to give me more of my optimal range. However, I'm so far back behind the court, you can see there that what I've got to do is I've got to elevate that ball now. I've got to get that ball up in the air. I've got to give it some air to spin down. So I'm allowing my opponent to push me all the way back. So I'm going to lose some ground because I'm just so deep into the court. If they're an aggressive player, they should recognize that and they're probably going to sneak in and take my ball out of the air and put it away for an easy volley winner. So the further back I get from the court, the harder it is going to be for me to get back into that point so that way I can stay into that rally. But what I want to try to do, if that's my option, is to go back. I've got to lift that ball up and I'm going to drive it just like I would a normal shot, but I'm going to be driving it up into the air a lot higher than I would a normal ground stroke. And again, because I'm so much further back, I've got to hit the ball a significant distance further than I would a normal ground stroke. So I've got to hit it another extra 10 to 15 feet further than I normally would. And so don't forget, guys, how hard you hit that ball and how high you hit it are going to help determine how far that ball goes. So I need to hit this ball further, so I'm going to give it a little bit more height to help give me that distance, not necessarily just sit back there and wail on the ball and try to crank it. I am going to still try to drive it, but I do need to give that ball some height. Now, sometimes you may want to match the angle of the shot coming into you. Depends on how high it is. If it's super high, you don't necessarily want to sit there and hit moon balls back. You don't necessarily have to match the angle of the shot, but the closer to the angle coming in, that's going to help give you a little bit more, um, it's going to help your strike zone. It's going to make it a little bit easier to get that ball back. So if a ball's coming in, and that's what I was telling you on the rise shot. So on the rise, you're not matching the angle. The ball's coming in and the ball's kicking up. It's going so vertical through your strike zone that when you're trying to hit it back, it's a lot harder. So now when I'm moving back, I can match more of the angle of the shot. It's going to let me hit the ball a lot more consistent. Now again, guys, of the three ways, my favorite way is to just keep my position on the court. I don't want to give up that position on the court. I'm just going to elevate my contact point by changing my shoulder angle. So I'm going to change the way my shoulders are angled so that way I can still drive the ball and I'm going to work the ball off the court and if they're a right hander I'm going to be working it to their backhand side. So that's going to be usually my preferred way to hit that unless the ball just kind of sneaks up on me and I've got no other option but to back up. So guys, I hope you've enjoyed and learned something from this video. I've been Coach Daniel for Hammer at Tennis. Do me a huge favor guys and hit that subscribe button. Hit that bell notification. Give this video a like and hit those comments below. So, hope that this is helping you with your high balls. Until next time, catch you later.